Hi everyone on the virtual platform. My name is Shadi Ahmed, and I'm gonna talk about using sketching algorithm to implement dynamic mode decomposition for the spherical shallow water equations data. So we all realize that we, we now have access to more data than ever before. This can be actual data from sensor measurements or some results from high fidelity simulations. On one side, we are so fortunate of course with this luxury for obvious reasons. On the other hand, dealing with these data sets is becoming a challenge in many disciplines. So there is a need for tools to analyze large data sets and extract some meaningful information from them. And one of these tools is dynamic mode decomposition or DMD. DMD has some roots from Cobman's theory where we define some mapping between the state and the observable in such a way that while your state might be evolving in, on some nonlinear manifold, the observables evolve on a linear manifold with a Koopman operator that maps yn to yn plus one. So DMD does a similar stuff, but in a data-driven framework. So in its simplest form, we assume that the observable is the state itself. And we would like to define this linear mapping in a least square fashions. So here we, we assume that these are some collected data sets at different times. First, we can reshape every snapshot in a column vector and stack all of them in a big data matrix and let's call it X. Now we can split this matrix into two parts. First part is similar to X, but without the last snapshot. And second part is the same as X, but without the first column. So we can consider X2 as one time step ahead of X1. Now we define A as the mapping from X1 to X2, again in a least squares approach. But usually A, this A operator is very large matrix. So we can project it into a low rank basis defined by UR. And usually this can be the most dominant POD basis functions from of X1 coming from the singular value decomposition. Then we can compute this as a smaller A tilde from this relation. And we can perform eigenvalue decomposition to get the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of A tilde. Finally, we recover the DMD modes of the original A operator using any of these relations with the corresponding eigenvalues. And here we can notice that each mode is associated with a growth rate, a growth or decay rate, and an oscillation frequency, which are useful in the analysis and prediction of the underlying dynamics of any system we are trying to analyze. As I mentioned in the beginning, our test case is the shallow water equations on a sphere, which are uh, given here. The derivation of this equation is mainly based on the assumption that the horizontal scales are much larger than the vertical, the vertical ones. And actually, this, this is valid for many of the geophysical flows. And that is why these shallow water equations are very popular or very common in this community or the community of geophysical flow dynamics. To start the simulation, we add some random disturbance to the equilibrium conditions. And for our analysis, we consider the vorticity field and we collect data for six days and we exclude the first three days from our data sets because they are just like spin up time. Before we apply the DMD, I would like here, I would like to I, I highlight one limitation of this approach. So if you are familiar with proper orthogonal decomposition or principal uh, component analysis, you probably know that they provide a hierarchy of basis functions that are sorted based, uh, based on their contribution to the total energy or the total variance in the data. So you just select the first few modes and truncate the rest. Unfortunately, this is not the case in DMD and there is no clear or straightforward way to sort or select the most important modes in the DMD framework. One way, is, one way to move around this issue is to do the truncation when we do the projection here at this step. So we do some early truncation. For example, if we are interested in getting 10 uh, DMD modes, we project A on the first 10 columns of U. So when we do the eigenvalue decomposition here, we just get 10 eigenvectors. And the, so at the end, we will get just 10 uh, DMD basis functions and we just take all of them. So we don't need to do any sorting or any uh, selection here. We just did the early truncation here at this step. 
Unfortunately, this approach is not robust and often gives some bad results, especially for conviction-dominated flows, as we see here, especially at these last times, or at the end of the time window. Instead of that, we can define some sorting criteria, but in some cases, like this depends on the problem itself and some heuristics, unfortunately, of course. One of the criteria that we are using in this study is shown here. And this form makes sure that we give importance to modes with high initial amplitudes and the modes with high growth rate, even if the initial amplitude might not be, uh, might not be very high. So compared to the previous case, we can see significant improvements, especially in the bottom row, even by I norm. So here's this without sorting, this is with sorting. So far, so good. However, one, one bottleneck in the DMD algorithm is the DMD, uh, is the SVD, singular value decomposition implementation of X1 here. This, this part becomes really expensive for high dimensional system with large data sets. And for the rest of my talk, I will focus on this issue. As the title implies, we would like to utilize sketching methods to reduce the computational cost of the DMD algorithm. And here, is sketch, the sketch of a matrix is simply another matrix, which is much smaller, but it maintains the, main, the important information about the original system. And this is usually done by some projections. And in this case, we use random projection. And we call it the approach sketchy DMD. For example, we might be willing to preserve information about, about the range of a matrix or its column space. So we first define a randomized matrix with a target rank K, and we let our original matrix to act on this matrix by multiplication to get this smaller matrix. Then we can further perform some QR decomposition to obtain an orthogonal basis. We can use this basis to project the original matrix onto a smaller subspace, so we can perform the expensive computations with this smaller matrix here. Once we are done, we can use the same basis here to map the results back to our original dimensions. This is basically what we do here in this slide. We define a sketch that captures the range of X1. So here we, we perform the SVD onto B1 here, which now has lower dimension. Then we map the singular ve uh, vectors back to the high dimensions using these relations. And as we can see that the results are very much similar to the result obtained without the sketch sketching, but with the sketching, the calculations are much cheaper because we are using smaller matrix here for the SVD. Now, instead of sketching the range of X1, we can get a sketch of the whole data matrix X without splitting it into X1 and X2. So we have a low dimensional sketch B that now we can divide into B1 and B2. And with this B1 and B2, we can perform everything in the DMD algorithm on the low dimensional space. Finally, we map the DMD basis functions uh, to the original co uh, coordinates or dimensions using these relations, this relation. Again, results are acceptable, but for this particular case, they are slightly worse than those obtained in the previous slide here, as we see here. Where we, in the previous slide, we were sketching the range of X1, but here we are uh, sketching the range of X. Now we push this sketching to another limit. So instead of focusing only on the range of, on the range, we can consider sketching the range and the core range of X1. So we define four random matrices here, and from them, we can obtain three sketches. The first is the range sketch, similar to what we did before. Second is a core range sketch, Third is a core sketch, which mainly gives more information about the relation between the range and the core range, which is useful in approximating singular values, which we need in our DMD algorithm. Again, we perform a QR for the range and the core range sketches. Then we define the core approximation, which is a small and square matrix with dimension K by K. And we perform the uh, SVD on this matrix very efficiently. Finally, we map back we, we map back to our original dimensions and to continue the DMD procedure. Here are the results again with 20 modes. And as we see, the performance is good, actually really good. Even if we replace X1 with this core approximation C1, which is much smaller, just K by K and K is 
some target rank it is much smaller than the dimension of the system. Finally, these are the root mean squared error for prediction with different approaches and different sorting criteria. And we can see that sketching based DMD or sketchy DMD is pro providing some acceptable accuracy compared to the deterministic DMD, which is more expensive. Now I conclude my presentation and I would like to acknowledge the funding support from the NSF and the DOE. And of course, thank you for uh, listening to my talk. Thank you.